G'day guys, back with the Outer Circle, and in this episode of Getting Started in Horus Heresy, we're going to finish off all the different Terminators by covering Legion Nullificators. What the hell are Legion Nullificators? They're a new unit introduced in Horus Heresy Book 8, Malevolence, and essentially they're an anti-demon, anti-psyker unit that have been introduced into the Legions, kind of like psychic destroyers, I guess you could say. Um, are they any good? I don't think so, but we'll go into it anyway, um, and I'll give my recommendations of which legions might get some use out of them in the green, probably won't get use out of them in the orange, and almost definitely won't get use out of them in the red. And I'll talk about the ideal situations for their use, of course, and what I think can be done to sort of tweak them and make them work a bit better, because I don't think they're in a very good spot. Uh, very similar to Destroyers on their initial release, they don't really have a niche that these guys fulfill, but something like regular Legion Terminators don't, and I'll get into the whys of that as we go along. But, as I say, because we've been covering Legion Terminators of all kinds lately, I think it's a really good spot to cover these guys because then, well, we can move on to something more interesting, and I'd actually get on to that at the end of the episode. So, zero to one choice, unless you have a specific console who unlocks them, uh, that allows you to take multiple units, but I don't really see how or why that situation would arise, uh, unless you were playing against Demons of the Ruined Storm and were trying to just go for maximum cheese it. Uh, if you knew you were playing against demons 100% guaranteed and you were trying to take the strongest possible list against them, yeah, okay, Legion Nullificators would definitely come in handy in that list. Anyway, they're a 225-point base unit, and all of the stats across the board are the same as regular Legion Terminators, except the Sergeant has a third attack and a weapon skill of 5. Additional models in the unit are 45 points each, so about 10 more than the regular Legion Terminators. And that's an important sort of number. Now, what do you get for that? Well, you get Hexagrammatic Wards as a Specialist War Gear. You have to take Cataphracty Terminator Armor, which I think immediately limits this armor uh, type. Limits the use of the unit. Um, Things like Emperor's Children, for example, Crusader, high initiatives in fights, things like that, you want multiple models. And unfortunately, you're not going to get those multiple models pulling it off with Cataphracty Armor. So, that's a problem. It should be a choice of armor, personally. Uh, they have their Legionnaires of Studies rules. They also have Stubborn and Adamantium Will. So, powers targeted against them are going to have more difficult time going off and be a bit less effective. And of course they're stubborn, so high leadership, which, okay, cool. They are leadership 10 base, so, but is it worth the 10 points for the stubborn and adamantium will? Hmm, I don't think so, realistically. I mean, Justerian of something very similar, but they're two wound terminators and have all those juicy buffs and the fact that they can all take challenges and such and they're probably a better investment than these guys are if you're going to be paying for extra points over regular legion terminators but again i'll get into that so you may take the additional five models 45 points each any model in the unit may exchange their ether shock maul which is basically a hammer maul power maul whatever you want to call it, Strength 6, AP 4, but has deflagrate like Volkite weapons. So when you successfully wound a target, you get to roll an additional wound against them. May result in a few extra wounds, and I'll give the timer, I think this will be best used later on. Um, they also have access to the Toxiferon Flamer, which we'll get into the rules of, uh, and their sergeant may take a power weapon, a power fist, or a thunder hammer, and any model in the unit may take a grenade harness. Now, first point I want to bring up is the power fist option is 15 points a model. Well, on a regular Terminator, it's a 5 point upgrade. So, that's 
probably a typo, especially because the Thunder Hammer option on the unit is 5 points cheaper than that at 10 points. Um, yes, not very good. I dare say typo. It should be a 5 point upgrade for a Power Fist, 10 for the Thunder Hammer on the Sergeant. But whatever is what it is. Uh, if you want to go around paying 60 points for a Power Fist armed Terminator, go right ahead. The Toxiferon Flamer. So I've bookmarked this in the book because it actually has a bunch of special rules because it's a weird, quirky Book 8 weapon where, if I can get on my high horse for a moment, Forge World overreacted ever so slightly to the power level of Thousand Suns. Basically, they went, geez. Armies with Magnus the Red are really powerful, therefore we're going to put in a bunch of weaponry which is really going to fuck level 1 psychers. Yeah. That could be its own video. But anyway, what the weapon does is it's a template weapon, strength 4, AP 5, so basically a flamer, but it has assault 1, it's poisoned 3 plus, and has the tainted special rule. What does tainted mean? Any to wound roll of a 6 with it is resolved at AP 2, so it will kill Terminators and Marines, theoretically. And any successful wound dealt by a weapon with this special rule removes the effects of any psychic blessing which is active on the target unit. That's rough. That is strong. Um, but let's say, let's say you took the Power Fist option, and you can take a Toxiferon Flamer on any model you'd be paying 70 points for a one wound terminator in cataphracty armor now again cataphracty why is it important no overwatch so you could have 10 flamers on your squad but none of them are overwatching and i think this is the most crucial weakness in legion nullificators because anyone worth their salt that sees that coming at them 10 flamers they're just going to charge it with something Time up in close combat where they can't use all those flamers to their advantage, and all of a sudden these terminators that are a bajillion attacks each are facing off against other terminators or other units which can just tie them up and aren't going to cost 70 points a model. That's just ludicrous levels of points. Now, hexagrammatic wards, their sort of special snowflake uh, item. When targeted with a shooting attack, close combat attack, or witchfire psychic power by a model with the demon or demons of the ruined storm special rule, a model with hexagrammatic wards may re-roll any failed invulnerable saves made against the attack. I don't know how often that's going to come in handy, apart from... There's very, very few attacks that demons have which are shooting, which will ignore a Terminator's armor. Very few AP2 weapons available to them. And most of the ones that are are single shot weapons. So, honestly, the amount of times that it's going to come up is limited. And the amount of times that the Psychic Discipline is going to hit you with something that... Like, most Psychic attacks that people like to use are powers like Psychic Shriek, ones that are good. Uh, whereas ones that are a lot of the pathetic magic missile disciplines, like Pyromancy as a whole, which no one ever takes in the history of ever, except for myself, because I'm an idiot, and I like to theme my Thousand Suns, having a sort of different psyche of each discipline, but Pyromancy, you get a lot of D6, Strength 6, AP4 hits, and AP5 hits, like, pfft, it's this shit, like, they're not going to affect these guys, so... That whole re-rolling your armor saves, your invul saves, uh, it's not going to be very useful. If it was re-roll regular saves, it'd be ridiculously strong, um, but it's not. Now, the legions I've listed, of course, some of them have some real buffs they can give to these guys, which will make them more handy, but, well, I don't know, I'm just not seeing it. So, different legions that will work with them. Dark Angels, namely for Stasis Grenades. Uh, you can pack a lot of them, of course, onto this unit. And being able to drop initiative and weapon skill on opponents, especially big demons, that's handy. If you uh, 
can drop a initiative 2 demon down to an initiative 1 and hit it at the same time with your power fist, that's pretty good. That's about it. Uh, the Empress Children will get pretty much no bonuses because this is a slow, ponderous unit. And an army that has all its buffs based around being quick. Iron Warriors, same sort of deal. Uh, the Stubborn is only really going to come into play in close combat because outside of it, Iron Warriors don't give a crap about getting shot by anything. Except for maybe pinning checks. Uh, White Scars, re-rolling ones to wound. These guys are no better than regular Terminators. So, nothing there. Spikes Wolves, yeah, counterattack. Uh, again, their regular Legion Terminators have that. Their Viragia have that. The Viragia have better war gear than these guys, so... Um, Imperial Fists. Alright, here's where it starts getting interesting. Uh, Imperial Fists have access to Storm Shields, but their specific wording says the Vigil Pattern Storm Shield can only be taken by independent characters in Terminator armor and by Legion Terminator squads. That's it. Very specific key wording, so not available to them. But the Imperial Fists have access to Teleport Transponders, which that's strong because a unit of these armed with, say, the Flamers, uh, and I'm talking a small unit, probably only five models, because remember, you can't shoot through your own squad with Flamers, so deep striking in, you basically can deep strike, get as close to the enemy as you can with that brave deep strike, and try and get a few Flame Rips into them, probably with three of your Flamers, before you go down. Um, maybe some Alpha Strike potential there. Exact same thing for the Night Lords. The other good thing is the talent for murder will come into play. Uh, you will often outnumber your enemies, being Terminators, having the bulky special rule. So, I think where the, where the Night Lords would really get a lot out of this unit is running them with a couple of those Flamers and playing against something like Solar Auxilia or Imperial Armor Militia. So those Volkites special rules on their mauls, the Deflagrate, you're gonna hit in threes, uh, on threes in close combat, you're gonna wound on twos, and then you're gonna roll over automatic wounds, they're not gonna get armor saves. It's gonna be absolute rape train, a unit of these guys, uh, because of the Deflagrate on the mauls. Very specifically combined with the Night Lord's bonuses. Other legions, yeah, okay, all these legions will get something out of these guys running around with power mauls that have deflagrate against Solar Auxilia, but I think for Night Lords, especially with, you know, Trophies of Judgment maybe to cause fear, yeah, I think they could be pretty good. Uh, Blood Angels, no bonuses really. Same with Iron Hands, although you can take a Cyber Familiar on the Squad Sergeant for shits and giggles. He'll have a 3-up invul save, which is strong, but again, nothing you can't do on any of your other squads, and really you should be taking Gorgon Terminators, because they're better. World Eaters. You will have a lot of attacks, uh, which is why they've made it into the orange zone. If, again, you go up against, say, fuck, I don't know, Militia and Solar Auxiliary again, you will definitely wipe out whole units in one turn. You will not get tar pitted with these guys. Uh, unless you get charged, which can happen. Uh, again, no Overwatch, so... I don't know. Uh, Ultramarines, you have a lot of morale bonuses as Ultramarines. That doesn't really do much for you when you're stubborn. So you're not really getting anything out of the Ultramarine special rules. Uh, you may get a few bonuses for things like other Ultramarine units nearby, giving you like re-rolls of some kind, but... <laughs> Overall, again, no better than any other Terminator. Death Guard. Death Guard will do pretty well with these, because Death Guard against poison weapons... Well, okay, it works both ways. Death Guard will use these units well, but they'll also take being attacked by these guys really well. In fact, there's two, maybe three armies you really don't want to go up against with Nullificators. Death Guard is definitely one of them, Salamanders is the other, and a third, less likely one would be the Thousand Suns. So with the Death Guard, Reaping Rod of War, you can have Rag Grenades on these guys, which is brutally strong. Rag Grenades uh, dropping toughness by one, combined with the Mauls, 
which have deflagrate, that means enemy terminators marines won't be getting feel no pain saves. So you can definitely wear down some numbers. Uh, also, you can take things like a power scythe on the sergeant. Yeah, good unit. Downside is, can't take chem munitions, uh, but if someone attacks you with their own nullificators, for example, poisoned attacks against you, you have feel no pain 4+. plus. So, those nasty little flame weapons they carry, yeah, you won't give a shit. <laughs> it's just that simple. Um, Alright, Thousand Suns. So, what do the Thousand Suns bring to the table? Well, they can't give shred to the bolters, because it's limited to Legion Terminators, Legion Veterans and Characters. So, uh, no shredding combi bolters, unfortunately. No help there. Um, can't give them Brotherhood of Psychers because that's limited to veterans and terminators as well. But you can give them the cult, which gives them plus one invul save. So, three plus invulnerable saves. And if you get hit by Demons of the Ruin Storm shooting attacks, then you can have a three plus re rollable invul save against them which is very strong. That's about it. Um, having cults as Thousand Suns makes things automatically better, uh, and the re-rolling armor saves is handy, and these guys aren't going to get, again, bulked down uh, by hordes, but I'm not saying they're a great unit, I'm saying they're just a bit better for Thousand Suns than, I don't know, Ultramarines. Uh, Sons of Horus. Merciless Fighters special rule will be handy for these guys. Um, bonuses to reserves would be handy as well if they're coming in uh, in reserve, of course. Things like that. No particular bit of war gear sticks out, and they're not much better than regular Terminators. I do think Sons of Horus would get some versatility out of them, but honestly, if you're paying the points for these, buy Justerian. Justerian Terminators, despite being very lackluster compared to, say, Segment compared to nullificators are fantastic. Word bearers, morale based bonuses, no real specials war gear to talk about. Why take them? Plus, you should be the guy using the demons, not being attacked by the demons. So, I can't really see any real use for these guys with word bearers, and the word bearers' big legion trait is awesome leadership, is stubborn. So, uh, salamanders, interesting one. So, just like the Death Guard, good fighting against Nullificators because enemy Nullificators, Toxiferin Flamers, are a flame weapon, therefore minus one strength against you. Downside is they're poison, so it doesn't matter they're minus one strength. <laughs> um, but as Salamanders, you do have the option of taking Dragon Scale Storm Shields, so you too, like the Thousand Suns, can get 3 plus invols. You've just got to pay the points for it. Only Bright Spark I really see here, and the only reason I really recommend them for Salamanders, it doesn't matter that you can't chase down people with Salamanders because you're in Cataphracta, you'll never do it anyway. Uh, and you can Mastercraft the Sergeant's Deflagrating Maul, which is pretty strong. And I'd probably just go Deflagrate Maul, and shield on the sergeant. Just making him a bit better sergeant because of that fact, and otherwise go pretty basic on the rest of the unit. And they'll do pretty well for themselves. Uh, enemy templates, weapons, that sort of thing, are going to be a lot weaker against you as well, which will be good against, say, demon template attacks. Yeah, you'll get some, you'll get some use out of them. The Raven Guard, I don't suggest it, but they will get Furious Charge, which is no different to any other Terminator that Raven Guard can take, so uh, the Alpha Legion, you could take Venom Sphere grenade harnesses, which are handy. You'll get Hammer of Wrath. You may be able to get in a few extra wounds early on in the combat. And that's about it. So, as you can see, even for the best legions like Death Guard, Night Lords, Salamanders, the units which are going to be really tough. Uh, or throw out a lot of attacks. They sort of get the thumbs up. Yeah, you might get something out of this unit. But nine times out of ten, I mean, I can take a Sekhmet Terminator with two wounds, a force weapon, and they'll also have a three plus involved save. They'll have a mastery level of two, uh, Brotherhood of Psychers. So 
they're going to be particularly powerful and they're going to cost five points less than a Nullificator stock. Do I want extra attacks from a mall or do I want the power of a force weapon? Tough choices. What hurts the Nullificators is the real lack of war gear options. Uh, chain fists, no. Um, other power weapons on the sergeant only. Um, lightning cores, no, which means things like, you know, Raven's Talons, for example, uh, the Raven Guard special weapons. Yeah, you're not getting those. Uh, a lot of the specialist weapons of the different legions are limited to sergeants only or in even independent characters only, like Ultramarines Legate Titan Axes. So I don't really see what this squad has to offer. They're good against demons, strong against demons, yes, but not really that much stronger than anything else because, again, the re-rolling involve saves is a very specific niche against, oh, I need to, a demon to attack me with an AP2 attack of some description that's ranged. There's just not many of them, and same with which fire abilities being cast by demons. There's very few, um, maybe... There's a couple that are basically psychic demolisher cannons, and they've got to be done at point blank range, but most people who are taking demons, if they even take psychic powers, are going to be taking demonology. Even though it's not a great psychic discipline for them, they can summon more demons, which is good for adding bodies on the table, or the smart demon players will be taking biomancy um, and trying to get iron arm and warp speed off on fucking scary monstrous creatures. So, this unit's crap. <laughs> Honestly, the more you look at it, you just I can't see the niche they're trying to fulfill. Much like the old Legion Destroyers, which at least have been given a lot of points buffs and such since. What would I do to fix them? Well, this is the big question. So, I guess these were made by the Legions in response to demons. So, in a lot of ways, that would make them sort of the spiritual descendants, or I suppose ancestors, of the Grey Knights. Why don't we give them some sort of more Grey Knight-esque weapons? You know, let's... I'm not a big fan of the Toxiferon Flamer, apart from the fact that hitting units of Blessed Thousand Suns will fuck their day over just for hitting them. You don't have to actually kill anyone, you just gotta hit them. That's a bit rude. I always hate things that just have an instant outcome, even if they've got no effect. I hate rules like that dog just sneezed uh, <laughs> um, that's definitely a thing I'd change also I'd, I'd be trying to give them weapons that are less like those those mauls are pretty neat if you want to kill hordes of well yeah demons um, and also solar auxilia militia I think honestly the unit's gonna be better against those than against demons, because at least demons will get an invol save, whereas hordes and militia, like, militia and sub rocks won't. So, these guys are going to be better at killing those than anything else. Lightning calls are a pretty cool option, but what about introducing, like, precursors to the Nemesis Force weapon? Like, give them some sort of helmet or poleaxe weapon. That could be a lot of fun, uh, especially because they don't have models, these guys. And that's a problem. Now, some will go, oh, yeah, well, we're Cataphractic Terminators. Okay. Power Mauls. Where do you get them? Oh, you have to go to Forge World and buy Resin Arms. And try and upgrade them with Resin Arms and such from Forge World. Yeah, no thanks. They made it quite difficult to make your own Nullificators. Um, the other thing is they should be in Tartarus Armor so they can actually move and run and get around the battlefield. Instead, they're in cataphractic armor, and again, the only thing it's giving you is a slightly better invol save for pretty much worse everything else, and that's only going to come into play when you're really getting those re-rolled invol saves, which is uh, not that often. So, I don't like the stubborn. The adamantium will's okay on them. Uh, perhaps they should have had some sort of psych-out grenades of some description, but overall, the unit... It's like they took the rules, some of the rules, of like Legion Elite Terminators and put them onto more expensive generic Terminators. 
And unfortunately, they're just moving into the points bracket where it's like, okay, Legion Terminators themselves are not the best thing ever. They're, they're serviceable. Elite Terminators are pretty good though. But it's, all of a sudden you have something which isn't as good as Elite Terminators and not as cheap as regular Terminators. You're like, well, what's the, what's the niche here? Now, squads of 10 with the Psych Out Flamers, the crazy Toxiferum Flamers, going up against Demons, like you know you're going to play Demons, yeah, okay, they'll be pretty good. They'll be pretty strong. They'll be, even be borderline OP because... You're going to get all these buffs against demons, and they're going to get zero against you, which is not really fair. But when is that going to happen? Um, if you've got a friendly game or something, you know you're playing against a demon player, and you go, okay, I'm going to I'm going to throw the nastiest thing I can at you to try and fuck you over. Well, that's not the spirit of the game for a start. I mean, if my friend did that to me, I'd be pretty annoyed about it. Probably still play along with it if it was fun, but unlikely to be fun. And... If you go to an event or something like that, you're going to be playing random opponents. And random opponents, again, most of the time, aren't going to be running Demons at the Ruin Storm. So, most games you play, you're going to be like, geez, I wish I had regular Legion Terminators. And on a squad of 10, base, it's a 100 point saving. I want the 100 points, thanks. <laughs> uh, if you're playing Imperial Fist, for example, yeah, the versatility of Deep Strike is amazing for nullificators, but also I can take regular Terminators with Storm Shields for the same points. So, what would I do? I can either have really tanky Terminators, which will be good against all comers, or I can have less tanky Terminators, which will be slightly, ever so slightly better against Demons of the Ruin Storm. Yeah, I think we know what we'd pick. And even then, I've still said Imperial Fist are one of the legions that'll get the most utility out of them. Ugh, horrible situation. So, Legion Nullificators. There you go, that's the down low on them. Um, I know it's a bit choppy and changey as I went through, uh, what was well structured, I suppose, in other videos, but, well, the unit's a mess. And so this video is a mess just like the unit. Because when little things like 15 point upgrade to go for a power fist or a 10 point upgrade to go for a thunder hammer, it's like, oh, geez, tough choice. One of these things is incredibly superior to the other. You know, I'm going to avoid that. <laughs> it's just never going to happen. And it's like the one thing that's like really niche about this unit, like the, the super malls, where it's like, yeah, these are going to fuck things up that they, that, you know, they ignore armor saves on. They're the thing you can upgrade away from, not two. That's stupid. So, yeah. Anyway, hope you all found this entertaining at least, uh, especially the part where the dog sneezed. What I want from my audience, though, is to suggest to me units I should cover next in the series. Don't just limit yourself to the legions, like Solar Auxilia, Imperial Militia, something like that. If there's a unit you're really keen to know about, how I'd use it, who it'd suit, what situations, let me know. Because then I can bring you more content that you personally enjoy. I'm Mac with Theater Circle. Thank you all for watching this episode, and we'll see you all next time.